Go this ahead. just this happened right before we went on. I thought maybe we should start with it, and I should throw you guys into it. But I said, no, we're not going to talk about it. But now we got to talk about it. <laughs> There's word going around that Disney has released their slate of upcoming films for the year 2022. 2023, 2024, 2025, and I believe 2026. And in the year 2025, and I'm asking you guys this based on you guys. I know you guys are both Star Wars fans, and that's why I can throw you into this without you guys knowing what the hell I'm talking about. But 2025, untitled Star Wars film is said to release in 2025. Okay, fine. But 2023, I think in December 2023, Rogue Squadron is on the slate to premiere in this in 2023 and i thought well this i couldn't i was trying to figure out if what i saw was old or new or whatever and then best spin bulletin which is pretty good with their leaks they've been pretty accurate on things they tweeted it out saying rogue squadron's coming or they put it on instagram somewhere they put it on rogue squadron is coming out in 2023 Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron is coming out in 2023. Last we heard, it was on the shelf. It was on the back burner. It wasn't happening. We didn't know what the state of it was. But then word came out, Rob, that Patty Jenkins dropped out of Cleopatra. She said, I can't do Cleopatra. I got to focus on Wonder Woman 3 and, and, and Rogue Squadron. Then we're like, what is Rogue Squadron still happening? But now, based on this, it looks like Rogue Squadron still happening. Rob, you're wearing a Warner Brothers hat. Wonder Woman 2 going first. Wait, I should take it off. <laughs> but what, um, what, what, what do you think of this uh, Rogue Squadron? I love that. Habit. What do you think of the Rogue Squadron? I mean, I'll be honest. Like, you know, it's promising for me to hear this, but I'm still on a situation, especially with this movie. Um, I'll believe it when I really see it. I, it's like, it, this is so, it's so many problems. And just, just seeing that it, that's the date that they have planned and it, if that's the date that we have planned, then we should start hearing stuff like concrete stuff about it very soon. It, it's 12 Be, because it's I would December, assume that, tw- December, sorry, December 22nd, 20, uh, 2023. It's December 22nd, 2023. It's a Wednesday. It's the same day that an untitled Disney animation movie comes up. Sorry, Rob. Just sorry. Just wanted to let you know that's the date just so to, to fit onto your point. Well, yeah. So again, it gets me thinking about it then because then it'll probably start shooting well before the end of the year, I would think. And if it's actually happening, if this is going to be the date, then we'd have to start hearing about stuff fairly soon, I would imagine, right? Like, and and I'll only believe it if that starts happening. If we get our first casting announcement within the next three or four months, then I'll be like, oh, maybe this date's going to actually hold. But as of right now, and the way this is, this whole part has been going with Lucasfilm and their directors, and P- the Padgett and stuff that has already been, you know, we know about, I'd be surprised that this date is actually going to happen. But you know, at the same time, hearing that uh, reputable sources are saying that this looks to be true gives me some hope. Well, it looks to be true that the report that this listing of upcoming Disney films is true, not necessarily that the movie's coming out that day is true, right? That that's the that's the targeted release date for this movie is true. That's what they're saying. But but, but if if they have a new targeted release date and that's it, then that gives me hope. Is what what what, what I'm really saying. But uh, that's right. the only that's that's the only question. But uh, as of right now, and seeing their what they would have to have on on tap over the next couple of months uh, makes me doubt it a little bit. Barry, do you doubt it? I do. I'm skeptical. <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Um, I don't. I yeah. Based on you know, I'd have to see a little bit better from Patty Jenkins personally. Um, I think the Star Wars has their winning team. It's in the Mandalorian crew. So I think I'd be a little more confident if they brought some of them on as maybe not directors, but consultants are generally playing some part of a foundational role in some of the decision-making, I think would give me a little more hope. And again, I go back to our video game conversation. I mean, Rogue Squadron was a beloved game for a reason back in the day on the N64. I mean, the formula is there to create a winning movie. You just need some people to execute it correctly. And then if you want to add and modify some things, do it. People are going to go see it. And I think 
Star Wars fans in general, we've all been waiting for those epic dog fights that we so missed out on. I mean, one of my favorites, my favorite probably from the Disney era is Rogue One. I mean, the the dog fight in that was just phenomenal. And I'm like, you need to take that, throw in episode three, and then blow it to kingdom come with expectations. And you're going to draw your Star Wars fans in there. And you're going to unite them. You're going to get profit. I mean, it's a win, 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 win. It, I guess for me, I think the common sense aspect in t- of it seems so simple. But I'm a little concerned of the Hollywood studios are going to kind of, you know, stick their noses in or not let the people who have done successes do what they need to do to make the movie successful. So I saw- off to hold out, but thank you for uh, letting me know about best pin uh, bulletin. I'm usually on Reddit for that information. So well, you know, got bulletin- a little more credibility. Oh. I'm going to have to read up. <laughs> oh wait, here, here's the first cancel- casting announcement. Tom Cruise is going to be in. Rick's Tom Club. Cruise is in. Yeah. Actually, then it would probably happen though. <laughs> it sounds like um, a meme. <laughs> I got, I got to say earlier today, I read an article. It was an interview with Rick Famuyiwa on, oh, God, I can't remember who did the interview. I'm sorry, but, um, and he said he loved working on Star Wars and the team and, and how Favreau, Filoni, and Kennedy were like the, the shepherds of that. And they brought everybody in. But he said it was a team themselves that told the stories. Apparently, he's going to be directing episodes of Andor. That's the rumor. If that's the case, I'm freaking excited. But what he said, though, is to your point, Barry, is they have the team, right? The Kennedy, Favreau, Filoni. And the thing that everyone seems to overlook when it comes to Mandalorian and Boba Fett, the thing that they overlook all the time. And because because I talked about this on the Rebel Scum podcast the other day, is like everyone was obsessed with with oh Bryce Dallas Howard needs to do a Star Wars movie, oh Dave Filoni needs to do a Star Wars movie because they like the episodes that they did of the Boba, Book of Boba Fett, and that's great, and maybe they should do a Star Wars movie, and I'm okay with that. But what everybody's forgetting is that Kathleen Kennedy and John Favreau and Filoni are the ones that brought these directors in. Right, like, and what you're saying is Star Wars doesn't have a Kevin Feige, and everyone likes to pretend that Kathleen Kennedy is Ke- is Kevin Feige, but she's not. She's the head of Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm is more than Star Wars. It's Indiana Jones. That's pretty much it. But there's <laughs> Howard the Duck. There's more going on there at Lucasfilm. So she's not the Feige. But you have like Favreau and Filoni, like you said, and I just think that like they have a winning combination there. They have like these two minds have gotten together. And they're a piece of Lucas, of George Lucas that no longer exists. And they're a piece of that. And what they did with The Mandalorian by bringing in all these other directors, these talented people who maybe you heard of, maybe you didn't, maybe Bryce Dallas Howard didn't really do much before that in terms of, of nonfiction. But they brought them in, they bought in, and they brought their own sensibilities to what they were doing. And now we're like, man, I wish these people would do Star Wars. And I think you're right. I think when it comes to the movies, they need maybe Favreau, Filoni, Kennedy. Maybe they're the trio that oversees what's going on with the live action movies. And they say, Hey, you know, who? why don't we take the movies in this direction? And they don't have to necessarily write them or direct them, but they get, they hire a writer who they trust. The writer writes it. Then they hire Bryce Tallis Howard or Rick Femiua or, or Deborah Chow or something like that. And they, and they, because they, they know, they seem to know who has, the, even in book of Boba Fett, which I loved, but people were like, ah. The second episode of Book of Boba Fett, I can't remember who directed that episode, but she did a fantastic freaking job. People loved that episode. Hi, Disney Desi. We're just rounding up. <laughs> but, but people <laughs> love that. People love that episode of the Book of Boba Fett. And this is someone that they pulled out and they put in. So I think, Barry, to your point, I think you're absolutely right. They have the perfect combination. Um, Patty Jenkins could be a part of that combination for all we know. But yeah, I, that's how I feel, man. Give it to them. Let them guide it. Let them figure it through. Rob? Oh, 100%. Like you're, you're preaching to the choir when you're asking me whether uh, Filoni and uh, Favreau should be involved, uh, you know, controlling Star Wars in this future. I mean, that the, they're the number one crew to, to, to do it. Like, simple as that to me. I think also what's interesting of that aspect that I don't really hear much talked about is I didn't know, like... Um, like Robert Rodriguez isn't a Screen Actors Guild member, and that to me. No, he I, backed out because of uh, um, what was the the. Correct movie me if I'm wrong, then. No, but no, I he like... he 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 turned it down. Sorry, Barry, he turned it down for yes. Sin City because he wanted Frank Miller to co-direct, and the Directors Guild said the only people that can co-direct had to be like related or brother brothers and siblings and stuff like that. They had to be related, and so he backed out of the Directors Guild, and that is your knowledge all right uh, <laughs> but i like the fact that they're pulling in outsiders i think that's the winning formula here lucas himself was an outsider 
So I think that's the winning formula here is, yes, you have Hollywood procedures, organizations, deadlines, profit to meet, but you've got to bring the outsider in because they're going to look in with a fresh point of view and say, yeah, I understand that you want to do A, B, and C because that's what you've always done, but we need to think over here and then let them experiment and the, hopefully they have the, you know, the rapport and experience to back up what they're saying. And I think that's why The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett and those series are doing well is because you've got that element that was missing a couple of years ago. Yeah. One hundred percent. I mean, uh, yeah, and 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 we're, when you're even talking about something like the MCU and stuff like that, right? Like, they're not like you know taking all these well-known directors and stuff like that and having them direct properties with us, right? Like, you know, John Watts has now just done three uh, Spider-Man movies, and I think before he did Homecoming, you'd be hard pressed to know somebody that really knew his name. Cop oh, car, well. cop car. But there you go. <laughs> I, love, I, love, I, do- I love cop car. I love cop car. Yeah, but I just mean that he wasn't a uh, a a name that everybody knew, right? No. Like you know, yeah, like it's not like um, uh, for the DCU, right? Like Zack Snyder was a fairly known name even by that point when he went to go do Man, Man of Steel, right? He'd already done his three hundred, he'd done his Dawn of the Dead, like you know, he he had a big repertoire of movies that people would have known him for. Mm-hmm. You know, not not so much with you know guys like John Watts, even like Peyton Reed. Like you know, you, you would you could look at his IMDb and know his movies and stuff like that. But they, they weren't guys that were like you know uh, top of their field and ones that in, instantly came to mind when you thought of direct uh, biggest directors in Hollywood. It's just they came in with their fresh perspectives, and now you got John Watts, who's literally on top of the Marvel world right now, especially now that he gets to do Fantastic Four next. And the, the the big thing is 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 movies are the the Marvel movies the Star Wars movies are different from traditional movies in that the more of TV shows, which makes sense for Favreau and Filoni because they understand who they need who they can hire to fit into the mold and bring their own sensibilities to it. And look, if Rogue Squadron happens, I'm excited. I, like I'm going to go see it. I'm not my my biggest concern that I've always said is we have Mandalorian, we have Book of Boba Fett, we're getting Ahsoka, we're getting Andor, we're getting Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, we're getting Mandalorian again. You know, we're getting all this stuff on the on the streaming side. Like, what is going to entice me about Rogue Squadron to go see it on the big screen when I have all of this stuff on the small screen that I can look forward to? That's my my big thing. Um, but anyway, we got it. We ain't going too long, guys. I got to let you go back to your, your lunch or your dinner or whatever you're doing. Barry's got a different time zone. He's like, I don't even know what's going on. So we're going to wrap it up right now. But, guys, thanks so much for being uh, on Casual Friday with me. I hope you're all wearing, like, pants or something. <laughs> like jogging yeah, pants. Yeah, it's been a long term, that. <laughs> no, 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 no pants Friday over here. No pants I'm, Friday. I'm, That's I'm, what we should I'm, 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 I'm still in China time. I, th- I think it's like 4 a.m. here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Rob, I was surprised you did this for me. You bailed yesterday, <laughs> but you did it today. That's great. But anyway, guys, thanks so much. Do you have anything you guys want to plug along? Like anything that you want people to, to gravitate to and plug? Rob, you've got to plug your review of Batman on Wednesday night. you got to plug that. Plug Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Come and see it on this very channel. <laughs> I'm going to uh, talk about it and then post it immediately afterwards. It'll probably only be like a minute or something like that, but still. Yeah, I mean it's gonna. Be, I no, mean, no, I I will tell you right now, there will be no spoilers, and whatever I talk about, there will be oh. no spoilers. 